Hello, welcome to the first part of your introduction into our essay, um, Discovering Personal Identity Through Vignettes. This is the first video in a series of two that you will be watching in order to uh, get started on this particular writing assignment. If you need to, go ahead and stop the video and make sure that you are prepared for the video with any kind of note-taking materials that you might need, um, paper, pens, pencils, uh, a Word document pulled up that you might have side by side. You'll want to jot some of these notes down. The guiding questions for the next two videos are going to include answering the questions, what is our first essay about, what is a vignette, and how do I begin drafting? So over the next two videos, we will be focused on these three questions specifically. Whenever I introduce a writing assignment for the first time, I always try to get the frequently asked questions kind of out of the way so that we can begin focusing on um, the writing assignment itself. But one of the first questions I always get is how long should this be? Um, this particular paper is at least a thousand words in total. Um, and I think what you'll see is as we get into it, um, it is very easy, one, to hit that level of development in this first essay. But also, I view essays or writing larger pieces kind of the way you would train for, let's say, some kind of physical challenge, a run or triathlon or lifting weights. And that is you start building slowly. So this will be the shortest of our essays that we will have this semester. And again, this particular paper is very easy to develop to that thousand words. You'll see that as we go along. What are the due dates for this particular assignment? Um, you're going to focus on getting a couple of pieces in so that we can focus on process. So the first uh, due date that you'll want to focus on is the body of the essay or the vignettes, which you'll upload by Monday, October 7. And then we will spend that next week really focused on editing and revising and developing the intro and conclusion. And you will upload the final draft to that particular or to the essay by Monday the 14th. To find out information about this assignment as you draft, you can always look on Canvas. There is actually a packet in PDF format for you to reference throughout that has a lot of tips and tricks as well as the assignment description, much of what we're going over in the next two videos. How do I begin? You just keep watching. We're going to walk through step by step um, the process to begin this particular drafting um, to get your body ready for the first draft submission. When we look at the purpose of this particular paper, um, I want to really provide an opportunity for you to reflect on impactful moments or scenes throughout your life that have helped define you. Um, I want you then to create a series of vignettes that will be connected through a common theme or thread, which will be the identity that you choose to focus on. Um, and the goal is really to choose a variety of scenes that are impactful for you. So for example, if you are going to use the identity of student um, and you define you as a student as being determined and um, intrinsically motivated, then you're going to pick scenes throughout your life that, that you would say led to you being that determined and intrinsically motivated student. Um, again, we're gonna walk through that process step by step. If we look at the shape of our essay, you see over on the right-hand side, we have this um, writing process, which I hope after reading Anne Lamott's article and after our discussion board, you see that writing is definitely a nonlinear uh, recursive process, right? So you may be in the pre-writing phase of one piece of your paper, but you're really in the revising p uh, phase of the other. And that's definitely going to come true for our particular essay. But if we look at the essay as a whole, it's basically broken up into an introduction. And the introduction in this particular paper is meant to, one, first engage your audience, provide some context, and then lead them to your central focus, which in this case 
will be your identity and how you define yourself in it. Um, notice I didn't use the word thesis. We will focus on thesis for our second essay. But in this sense, in this case, with this particular paper, um, in the genre that we're using, we're really only looking for that central focus or themed thread that you will use versus a thesis where you're arguing or asserting a particular position. When we look at the body of this particular paper, we're going to use the word vignettes. Um, we're going to use that specific genre um, in order to bring your story to life through the scenes that you choose. And then we have our conclusion. And for this particular paper, a conclusion or an effective conclusion might be something like connecting past to present, right? Your intro is you in the present moment, who you are. The body or your vignettes are going to be those scenes, those moments that have helped define who you are. So we've got this past to present connection. And in the conclusion, what you might do is kind of summarize that connection and then lean into the future. For right now, we really want to focus on the body of your essay, and that's the vignettes. So we're really starting in the middle of our paper. Um, and I, I want to say this, it's going to feel a little disconnected. Uh, perhaps you're not used to starting in the middle of your paper, but I want you to kind of trust the process on this one. And in the end, when you read the entire thing, once it's fully developed, they're, they're pretty amazing. So let's turn our attention to defining vignette for just a minute, which is the body of your essay. In literature, a vignette is a short scene that captures a single moment or a defining detail about a character, idea, or other element of the story, and in our case, a personal identity. Vignettes are mostly descriptive. In fact, they often include little or no plot detail. They're not standalone literary works, nor are they complete plots or narrative. Instead, vignettes are small parts of a larger work and can only exist as pieces of a whole story. So this is the body of your essay. Four vignettes, four scenes or pieces that when we put it together with your introduction and, in your, in, and your conclusion are going to make um, for a very powerful story. But the four vignettes are going to feel like individual scenes that when you pluck them out, they don't really have a plot to them. They will just be descriptive moments. Vignettes really take on a show versus tell um, style of writing. So let's take a look at an example real quick. This is a tell. This is a narration. One time I got a C on my report card, probably because I had been daydreaming in class instead of doing my work. I started crying and almost threw up. The C really stood out because it was written in red ink while all the A's and B's were in black. I just knew my parents were going to be upset. I'd be grounded for sure. Let's take a look at that same thing in a show style of writing. With a neatly folded crisp report in hand, she hesitantly unveils the evidence of her afternoon daydreams. Etched in red ink, the C boldly sits among the list of A's and B's, scribbled in lighter and finer black lines. A tear simmers in the corner of her eye. Knowing the doom that lies before her, she fights the vomit creeping up her throat, ready to spill onto the freshly vacuumed carpet. The wardens at home would surely punish her. No activities, no phone, no life. She might as well be locked behind iron-clad bars. Her life as she knew it is over. Let's take a look at these two things, which are really describing the same thing side by side. Only in this side, we have this show, this descriptive. And on this side, it's somebody really telling what was happening. So one of the first things you notice is that this particular side, the tell side, is in the past tense, whereas this side is in the present tense. There's a couple other things I want you to notice. And one is that when we look at this show versus tell, let's take a look at a couple of examples. On this one, it says my report card. On the show side, it describes the report card to give you an image of what it might have looked like. Neatly folded, crisp report. So they're using those descriptive words. 
you can kind of see that report. Another one that you might want to take a look at is this one right here where it says written in red ink. On the show side, it says etched in red ink. If I say written, we all have a perhaps a different view or image of what that means. But if someone says etched in red ink, we get this image of something that's like permanent. It is etched in glass or it's etched in metal. There's a permanency to it to, to show the drama of this. A couple other ones is uh, include where she says, I started crying. Now, if I say crying, we all have a different image in our head. It might be someone who's just silently weeping. It could be someone throwing an all-out fit. We all have a different image. However, over here, she says, a tear simmers in the corner of her eye. She's telling you that when I say crying, I mean a tear simmers in the corner of her eye. We all can get that image in our head of, of having something bubble up, uh, a tear that you don't want to let fall, and you can feel it. So much more descriptive than just, I started crying. The same thing over here, where she says, we're almost threw up. Over here, she describes it as she fights the vomit creeping up her throat, ready to spill onto the freshly vacuumed carpet. And again, instead of threw up, we see that she's describing it to us. So we can see that in a vignette, we have it in the present tense. It's happening in the moment, even though it happened a long time ago. Um, but we're also pulling the audience into those scenes um, that we have versus just telling them about something that happened. So let's try it out real quick. Let's take this picture just as an example. Some of you may be familiar with it, um, but even if you're not, it's not a big deal because you look at it and it's just a scene, so you can make up any scene you would like. But for those of you who are, this is Harry Potter. This is the scene um, in the first one where they are, they've got the sorting hat on. That's where the big hat is. And they're putting them into their different houses. Hermione is sitting there. Look at her face, um, her body position. You see the hat. You can see the facial expression on the hat. He looks a bit grumpy to me. And she looks a bit scared. So if we were to use this as an example and I say write a vignette based on this snapshot, this would be a scene. It might look something like this. Seriously, I'm sitting here with this crazy old hat on my head awaiting my fate. How can this hat possibly understand me? How can it look into my soul and decide with one word who I will call my friends? Please, please, please don't pick Slytherin. That house is not me. It's not who I am. Oh gosh. I feel my palms sweating and my heart is beating out of my chest. Wait, is it normal to hear your heart beat in your ears? Yikes, maybe I'm, I'm having a heart attack or something. The weight of a thousand stairs is beginning to make me feel as though I am going to fall through the floor. Gryffindor, what? Oh my gosh, it worked. The sound of that one word from this hat has just made my year. Whoa, now I'm tired. So this is just a quick little vignette that um, I created. Um, to perhaps describe or bring about, bring the audience into the scene of what was happening from her perspective, right? This is from Hermione's perspective. Um, so this, this is perhaps what she might have written as a vignette for that particular image. So one of the things to notice, or a few things to notice, is that this is written in first person. Your vignettes are from your perspective. Um, it's you. You're pulling your audience in and you're describing something. Um, it's written in the present tense. Even though your vignettes, all of them will be something that happened in the past. Because we are pulling our audience in, you're going to write them in the present tense. And it's very descriptive. Notice it's not um, just walking them through what was going on. It's describing how she felt. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, figurative language in there when she says the weight of a thousand stairs is beginning to make me feel as though I'm going to fall through the floor. Um, she describes the sweating palms, the her heart beating out of her chest, um, not literally, right? It's figurative language. So you can kind of get a sense of how she was feeling. And this is a scene. This is a vignette. 
So when we look at writing a vignette, um, the writing of a vignette can cause a great impact on the reader if the emotions of the scene are pushed forward through a method of suggestion through which the piece will hint towards something much bigger. It's important that your writing makes the reader imagine the setting you are describing. So, for example, if you're writing about a man who is sitting alone in a room, you will have to imagine reasons as to why such a situation has occurred and add small details to your vignette, which will suggest uh, these thoughts to the reader. This helps pique the curiosity of the reader, right? So if we go back to this particular one, it says, how can Miss Hat possibly understand me? Here I am awaiting my fate. So she's giving you hints on why she's sitting there. When we look at writing a vignette, we want to keep it concise. This is the main feature. It's just one scene. Although we get tempted to write further due to the wider context because we want to tell the audience everything, we need to stick to providing the reader with suggestions of the story rather than giving the whole plot. So for example, I have many students in this particular piece that will write about graduation day. Um, and I will say this, if you write about something like, if you take a day, a graduation day, even in the graduation, those three or four hours, you're gonna choose a moment from there, such as walking across the stage or putting on your cap and gown. That's the scene, that's the moment that you're going to be placing the audience into. The goal is not to tell about the entire day, um, one thing to remember is that these, these vignettes represent scenes that have been impactful to your identity, so you can write them as such. As far as structure, you have complete freedom to form the vignette how you would like. You can choose whether you will follow a fixed structure for the beginning, middle, end or not. You can also choose whether you want to have a central subject, whether the vignette will be resolved at the end or remain unresolved. There's no restriction on the style of writing or its genre. You can completely mix it up with simple language, very detailed language, um, dialect. Um, you're only limited by your creativity. So I want to look at this assignment before we leave this video and move into getting into the brainstorming piece. So your assignment is basically this. You're going to write and publish, um, which means submit your own collection of vignettes. This collection includes at least four. Um, of course, there can be more using the appropriate literary devices to bring your stories to life. That's the important thing to remember. Bringing your stories to life through imagery, through figurative language, personification, etc. Create an appropriate title for each vignette, um, or i.e. a subtitle. So each vignette will have their own title. Um, you will have then a title for the overall paper, but since we are beginning with the middle, we can focus on the fact that they will need subtitles. Create an introductory paragraph that provides the contextual thread for your vignettes. In other words, how are these independent pieces tied together? In our case, this thread is your chosen identity and how you define yourself in that identity. And then create a closing paragraph that leaves your audience with something to ponder. In our essay, think about how you might connect the past to present with regards to your identity and the moments or scenes in your vignette then think about leaning into the future to show how this identity will serve you moving forward. Now, again, in the assignment description in the packet, the PDF packet, there are a lot of tips and tricks with regards to this, but you will also be then moving over to the next video. So that's the next step. Watch the second video in the series to begin your brainstorming process. Thank you for watching. Now head back to Canvas. Let's get that second video going so you can begin your brainstorming process.